Hi, HV family. Mark and Kim here, and uh, I hope you guys are doing well. We're going to sing a couple of songs here, and then um, we'll see what the Word of God has for us this uh, this morning. So if you have a hymnal, uh, we're going to be singing um, To God Be the Glory, and I hope it's a blessing. If you can sing along, um, please do. song here, Amazing Grace. This is something everyone should know. So please sing along.
it's nice to be with you, to be seen of you today. Um, it was good to see some of you guys last uh, uh, around Easter time a few weeks ago, and uh, happy to see you guys. And hopefully, we'll be uh, able to see each other um, more often and soon. Um, if you could turn to your Bibles to Philippians chapter three. Philippians chapter 3, we'll, uh, we'll start in verse 7. Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth that you've uh, provided us in your Bible, Lord. And pray, Lord, that you might uh, uh, watch over us and uh, protect us, Lord, and uh, keep us safe this day, Lord. And uh, Lord, I pray that you might speak to um, your people, Lord. Um, encourage where there needs to be encouragement and comfort. And uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you for um, all that you are, Lord, and uh, how good you are to us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so in Philippians chapter 3, uh, we'll start in verse, uh, actually verse 7. So, uh, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless I, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. And so, um, I want to fo focus on verse 10, but um, what Paul's basically saying in, in this chapter, he's talking about, all the things that he he was um, before he found Christ, um, you know, he he was a, a Pharisee. He was um, a very religious person, and um, a lot, he, he was very highly respected in his his community. I mean, he he, he had it all going for him, um, you know, for you know, in his in his time uh, before he got saved. And um, uh, you see here in verse 7, he says all those things that he thought were gained to him, all those things that he thought were profitable to him, he counted loss because of what he found in Jesus Christ. It wasn't even comparable to what Jesus Christ could offer and provide to him. So he, all those physical things that he used to think so wildly of, he, he just considered them as, as just, you know, uh, trash, garbage. Um, and so if you go to verse 10... You see there's a, a little bit of contrast coming from uh, verse 7 um, in verses 9 and 10. He says, And be found in him, and having, non, mine, having not mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. And let's talk about just knowing God. And I wanted to talk about um, what, what, Paul, what Paul was talking about, but the fellowship of his sufferings and what is fellowship in the Bible. And ultimately, how does that um, make us conformable onto, onto Christ's image? You know, uh, Paul says, being conformable onto his death, which is Jesus' death. Um, so it would be helpful to kind of go back and look and see where fellowship first occurred in the Bible. So if we go to Genesis chapter 3. And the question throughout this, as I was putting this together, is, you know, what what's conforming us? You know, being conformable onto his death. You know, and and, and conform means just to um, allow something to um, influence, but to make or resemble after, right? So, um, you know, it's similar to, you know, I, I was thinking of uh, my daughter. You know, she she wants to be like her mom, my wife, and you know, she'll you know put clothes on and try to just you know she'll she'll dress up you know she'll put her mommy's shoes on right why because she she wants to be like mommy because that's that's her role model that's what she, who she has in her life that she looks up to and um you know all the things that you know mommy does influences and in, and in, and puts puts her in that that path or that way of being more like mom um, and so it's similar to the christian right how do we let how do we conform to christ's image how do we conform you know, be made conformable onto his death and knowing Christ. And it all kind of goes together. And um, I thought it was pretty, pretty cool how that all worked out. Um, and it's no chance because the Bible is, is perfect and it lays everything out, you know, in such a, a great way. Uh, if we would just study it and, um, 
and, and learn something from it and just, you know, ask God to give us the wisdom to, to learn. Um, so in Genesis chapter three, um, and just to give some context here, this is um, Adam and Eve and um, uh, Eve ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and because of that, she, she sinned against God and Adam had the, the fruit as well. And he sinned against God. And so there was a punishment for, 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 for not following God's commandment. You know, God told Adam and Eve that you cannot eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, um, and they did. So if we go to verse eight, it says, and they heard the voice of the, of, of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And so a couple of things here. You know, God created Adam and Eve um, for the purpose of um, glorifying him, but also for their fellowship, for their um, for a relationship. And you can see that, you know, it wasn't an uncommon occurrence in, in you know, the Garden of Eden uh, for God to come into the garden in the cool of the day and to walk with, walk with man, walk with Adam. But because of Adam's sin, um, Adam hid himself because he realized that he was naked and he realized that he, he couldn't have that fellowship that he once had with God. Um, and, and you see that, that in the, it, it's, it specifically says heard, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And so, you know, that fellowship that should have been happening, that should have occurred, wasn't happening because one party had sinned and one party couldn't, couldn't be close to God, being Adam and, and Eve. They couldn't, they couldn't no longer have that same kind of fellowship. Um, but the good news is if you're saved and you're a Christian and you accept that Jesus Christ is your savior, you can't have that fellowship with God again. Um, you know, we, he, he made that, he was that propitiation. He was that atonement, right? He was that sacrifice that bridged the gap that was broken there in that verse that Adam couldn't, Adam couldn't come back to God like he did before because he had sin and God saw that sin and God couldn't interact with that sin. Um, so let's talk more about the voice of the Lord. You know, what is, what is a voice? You know, and, and um, the voice, a voice is something, um, uh, you know, people say, you know, oh, well, my voice isn't being heard. But a voice is something that's very personal, something that's specific and unique to an individual, right? Everyone has their own voice. Everyone's voice sounds a little bit different. Um, it, it's a representation and reflects personality. Um, you know, a voice in some ways is more important than even the words that are being said. You know, if you hear someone's voice, you can kind of tell, you know, how that person's feeling. Is that person feeling, you know, uh, uh, strongly about something, sad about something? The voice is very important. So let's talk about God's voice. It's personal. Um, so it, let's go to Psalms verses, uh, Psalms 18. Psalms 18, and we'll uh, skip over to Psalms 29. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. His voice is powerful. It has effect. Um, it's, it's strong. Uh, Psalms 29. Let's go to Psalms 29. And uh, in verse 3, it says, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth and the, the Lord is upon many waters so the voice is it, it, there's thunder again it's strong it's powerful it says in verse 4 the voice of the Lord is powerful there you go powerful the voice of the Lord is full of majesty the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars yea the, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon Le, you know the cedars of Lebanon you know, if you ever looked at the Lebanese flag there's a cedar tree and the cedar is just a symbol of strength and it's a symbol it's a strong tree and it's saying there that the, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Um, the voice of the Lord's strong. It's powerful, right? It's that's pretty simple to see. So it's no no wonder that when the voice of the Lord was in the garden and Adam had sinned, he's hearing that voice. That doesn't. It sounds kind of scary. 
and because he had sinned, he he, he had he couldn't he, he hid himself. And that voice can be scary to those that don't know God, that that don't have that fellowship, that don't recognize His voice. Um, let's let's go to um, Hebrews chapter. Um, Actually, uh, verse 7 here in, in, in Psalm 29, we'll go to there. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. And the, so the Lord, the voice of the Lord can divide things. And so, you know, what's the, the voice of the Lord to the Christian, to the believer? And the voice of the Lord is the word of God. We, we have to get close to know the word of God so we can know his voice. You know, that's how we get to know God. Um, you know, going back to Psalm, uh, Philippians chapter 3, what, what Paul's talking about, that I may know him. You know, there's a way that we can know him too and have fellowship with him, um, but we need to get to know God's voice, get to know God's word. And um, if you look at it, similar to Psalms, it says, it says that his voice divided, right? So if we go to Hebrews, we're going we're gonna to prove some things out here. In Hebrews chapter 5, and in verse 12, For the, Lord, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you see, the word of God also has is able to divide things, okay? And so it's similar. To, it, they're they're um, uh, very similar to each other. And the word of God and the voice of the Lord for the Christian are, are pretty much the same thing. It's, it's how we get to know God. It's how we have to hear God. Um, you know, even like we said before, even the words, you know, of the Lord, like the, how important those words are, you know, as you get to study them and, and, and hear them, you might not always understand what God is trying to say, but if similar to a voice, you know, if you, if you hear someone, you can kind of tell by the tenor of their voice, you know, what, what they're trying to convey. What does God, how does God feel about certain things in your life? How does God feel about, you know, your marriage? How does he feel about your family, you know, your children? Um, God has laid all of those things out. And we can know if we just go to his voice, go to his word and, and take heed from that. And let that conform us to himself. So that that's influencing us and, and um, you know, having an impact in our lives. You know, there's a lot of voices out in the world, right? There's, there's, there's news, there's social media, there's, you know, uh, friends, family, you know, co-workers, um, you know, nurses, doctors. I mean, there's there's all kinds of voices out there, um, and sometimes it's hard to figure out which one to listen to. You know, which one's telling you the truth? And the Bible is something that we can always go back to as our source of truth. We could we could tie everything back to that, um, and, and we should tie everything back to that as a basis for our lives. Um, that's that's how we know, you know, God is real, and that's also how we know how to live our lives that glorifies God. Um, let's go to John chapter 10. Let's talk about Jesus's voice. In John chapter 10. In verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine as the father knoweth me. Even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep have I I have, which are not of the soul, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And so there you see that he's saying that they, the, the sheep, they, they hear my voice, they know my voice, okay? So the, his people should be able to recognize his voice. Um, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. And let's talk more about God's voice to, to the believer. Because we know how powerful it is. It's strong. Um, and it can be a little bit scary. But you'll see here that, that his voice and his, his, the tenor of his voice to his children is different from to the unbeliever, to the world. Um, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. Um, we'll actually skip down to verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him 
that overcometh will I grant to seat with me in my throne, even as I also have overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, someone who wants to come into a house, someone who wants to have fellowship, right? In verse 20, it says um, that he wants to come in and sup with, with us and he wants to be with us. Um, that voice is something that's usually, you know, coaxing, calming. If someone came over, a friend came over and wanted to come in and, and have dinner with you, you know, that's, that's a friendly voice. That's something that, you know, that's somebody that you want to bring in. Well, Jesus is saying that he's at the door. He's standing at the door. He's knocking. He wants to come in, come with us and to have that fellowship with us, you know, and again, through his word, that's, that's how we have fellowship with God and how fellowship with Jesus Christ. Um, so the question is, are we, are we letting, are we doing that? Are we letting that into our lives? Are we, are we opening that door and having fellowship, you know, with, with the Lord, you know, um, it's, it says, and we'll sup with him, you know, to have a meal, you know, having a meal with someone is, is very, it's analogous to having fellowship, you know, a lot of fellowship and, you know, conversations and it's all about, you know, over a meal. And that's what Jesus Christ wants to have that fellowship, that intimate, um, relationship, uh, with his people. Um, it's encouraging, it's loving, it's inviting. And uh, we'll go to Song of Solomon, chapter 2. And then we'll just kind of close this out. And I hope this is a bit of a blessing to you. Um, it was to me as I was studying out some things. And just to get to know God's voice. It's encouraging and it's, it's better than all the other voices out there, I can tell you that. Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Um, Song of Solomon is a book, um, and it, it's it's in the Old Testament, and, but it's also a picture of Jesus Christ's relationship with this church. And in Song of Solomon chapter two, verse eight, uh, this is um, the, the the wife here um, talking to her bridegroom, and uh, the voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young hart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the window, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. And right there, you know, the bride is, is in love with his, her bridegroom. And that's how we should be with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, she speaks about his voice. Something that she recognizes, she knows, she trusts, she loves, she wants to hear that voice. She's enthralled by this, her, his voice. And it's a voice that brings her cheer, happiness. And are we, are we, do, are we looking forward to her, his voice, to Christ's voice, to the word of God? Are we looking for that fellowship? Are we like that bride, you know, waiting for their savior, or for her savior, for her Lord, um, we should be that way, just like that in, the, in, the, in those verses, uh, with that same enthusiasm, you know. And the more you get to know uh, the Word of God, and the more you get to know the voice of the Lord, the more comf comforting and calming and, and, and loving and, and much more you want to be with that person. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, like going back to my daughter. You know, my daughter, when I speak, you know, my daughter can, depending on who I'm talking to, you know, she might get... You know, maybe a little riled up. Maybe you know, maybe I'm on the phone and I'm you know not happy or about something, or, or maybe I'm cheering on a Yankee game or something like that. You know, I like I like sports. You know, she she'll she'll react in a different way, but when she knows my voice and the way that I'm talking to her, um, you know, and, and when I'm talking to her, I, I'm it's a different voice. It's something that I'm I'm trying to be closer to her. I'm trying to you know, it's a comfort, and that's what God it, it, that's what God's like. You know, to the un to the unbeliever, you know, the voice might be, sound so strong and powerful and scary, but, you know, when God talks to his people, you know, it's a voice of love and welcome and comfort and, and, and grace and mercy and just uh, um, and kindness. And that's, that's, how, that's how God is. And so um, I just want to leave you, you know, and all the voices out there in the world, you know, what voices are we letting shape our lives and, sh and you know, make, what are we, what, what voices are we letting influence us? And, um, if you're not saved, I would encourage you, you know, to get in on um, Christ's plan for salvation, which is, you know, he died, um, went, to, went to hell and died for us on a cross. 
um, and then resurrected the third day. We just celebrated, and, and um, you know, the Resurrection Sunday. You know, a few weeks ago, you know, throughout the world, Christians typically, you know, do that on Easter. And um, you know, the question is, you know, are you are you saved? Are you bought with with His sacrifice? Um, you know, you can get to know His voice. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of voices out there. There's a lot of things out there that um, you know will will cause doubt and harm. But God's voice and Jesus' voice will always um, steer us towards truth, towards towards His love, and um, having a relationship with Him. So um, uh, if you just bow your heads, we'll pray, and um, I hope this was a blessing. Heavenly, Lord, he Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for, again, this opportunity. We thank you for your word. We thank you for um, just that voice, Lord, that we can trust, Lord, um, that we can, um, despite all the things and the noise in this world, we can... Um, rely on you, Lord, um, the grace and truth that's in your word, Lord. Uh, we just thank you for um, you just just everything, Lord, that you've given us. And uh, we thank you for uh, just this day. Pray that you might bless us, watch us, watch over us, Lord, and bless each and every person who's listening to this message. Um, and I pray that you just might uh, do what only your work can do, Lord. And uh, Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see, uh, see you guys soon.